Hey guys, Marauder here with my friend Sandal Fawn, and we're here to talk about another movie we just got back from, Cowboys and Aliens. This is a movie that I've been looking forward to for a long, long time, being a huge Harrison Ford fan as I am. And so, when I saw he was in this movie, it was a must-see for me. So I thought we'd talk about some of the things we liked, some of the things we didn't like, and give an overall recommendation. And, spoiler alert, just saying that right now. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get some private messages like I did with Green Lantern, complaining. <laughs> I warn you. Alright. So, some of the things you liked. Uh, Harrison Ford and Daniel Craig are both really good in this movie. Like, well, generally everyone does a really good job in this movie. Yep. Yeah, I can't think of anyone who I didn't really like. Um, yeah, the acting was good. Um, Everybody had a role, even even the really minor characters. That, yeah, there's not much character development to them, but you're like, yeah, they they, yeah. they serve the purpose that they needed to, and then move on. Yeah. Um, yeah, Daniel Craig and, and, and Harrison Ford, I thought, kind of meshed well together. Daniel Craig is like this loner kind of semi cowboy thief kind of character and mm -hmm. Harrison Ford's this old battered war veteran who's a like a cattle rancher and they basically joined forces to hunt down the aliens and retrieve their loved ones but so they they butt heads from time to time but it's all it's all very well done oh yeah yeah so yeah nobody uh, nobody I didn't nobody I could point out and go oh they did a bad job it was all yeah. good all around. Olivia Wilde also did fairly well, although, I don't know, I found her character a little strange, because she just kept running up to Daniel Craig's character like, do you remember me? Hey, hey, hey. Trust me, I would remember you, Hollywood actress Olivia Wilde. Yeah, those like those eyes creep me the hell out. So oh, I, know. I would so remember those. They're so blue-green. They're like, yeah, they're like piercing. Every time she's, they're doing like a... Like it's a like facial a shot head on. I, so it just draws me out of the movie. But no no, she did she did fine. Um she played some kind of space oracle character. Mm -hmm. Go figure that one out. Lots yeah. of lots of space in this movie. Obviously. Shocking. I know. Cowboys and aliens. Go figure. Anyway, um there's not really much I didn't like about it. It all pretty... Oh, yeah. It, it fit really well together. The plot was really well paced. There wasn't a lot of just pointless scenes that went nowhere. Like, everything just yeah. kind of flowed really well throughout the movie. Um, there, there are a couple stupid moments that just make you scratch your head, but... Yeah. But, uh, you know, overall, it all pretty much works. So, yeah, I... I like this movie. Yeah. No, yeah, I would recommend this movie. Certainly. But uh, that doesn't uh, make it perfect in terms of a movie, because there were some questionable things that happened. The first thing, obviously, is Daniel Craig wakes up in the middle of nowhere and doesn't remember who he is and doesn't remember anything about himself or anything that happened, and he's got this gauntlet thing on his wrist that shoots lasers. Okay, all right, cool. But then when they explain where he got the thing, it just made me kind of yeah, kind of cock my head to the side and just go, "Really?" Basically, he was abducted by aliens and his wife. Yeah. And he, they were both on like torture tables as they were being probed and and yeah, experimented on. They go into this big flashback where it shows him watching his wife get incinerated by one of the aliens on a surgical table. And then the alien comes over to him and takes his power band off, puts it onto the surgical table right next to him, and then picks up a laser scalpel and starts trying to go to town on Daniel Craig. And Daniel Craig isn't restrained at all. Yeah, or he sedated. Just goes, they jam it into him and he just goes, ah, and hits the alien in the face. And then suddenly puts his arm down and it clicks the yeah, thing onto his wrist, on. and he's like... And then he just kind of wanders out of there. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's how he got away. Like, really? You didn't think to tie him down at all? I really liked his expression, the expression on his face when he was just wandering out of the alien spaceship. It looked like he just smoked a Jeffrey. Yeah. 
I'm Jeffrey. He was, <laughs> he was totally high. <laughs> he was totally high during half of this movie, I'm sure. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of how the movie starts. Is he goes to town, and everybody's like, "Oh, he's the big wanted guy on the poster." And so Harrison Ford's character, who's named um, Dollar Hyde, Woodrow Dollar Woodrow Hyde. Dollar Hyde, who is a rich cattle rancher, if you don't believe it, um, which is probably the most convenient name for oh, a character yeah. ever. He must have changed that. You don't just get dollar hide right off the boat. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, he, he comes to town and he's like, you owe me money. You stole my gold. And that's basically how they kind of start butting heads. And he's like, I don't remember anything about anything, so I'm sorry. And then the aliens attack and just start grabbing people. What was really funny was the way they actually abduct people. It's not, it's not with a tractor beam... They or use, anything. They use, like, a grappling they hook. They use space lassos yeah. to, to herd all the people into their spaceship. And, and and when I saw that, it's like a claw that just kind of whips out, grabs you, and pulls you with the ship. And, but what really drove me nuts was I could just imagine hundreds of aliens, like, with those little arcade claw machines going, I gotta get the one ball character out of there, and I only have 50 <laughs> cents left. It's just, like, I don't know. It was kind of... It, it, it worked, it made sense. Yeah. It was kind of cool, like just the way they got, just grabbed and pff, flown off like that. That was awesome, but it was kind of silly because mm -hmm. that's all I went through in my head was like people practicing on claw machines. Um, yeah. Other than that, oh, and the fact that like uh, Olivia Wilde's character, she yeah. basically dies. They she gets abducted and and Daniel yeah. Craig chases down the ship and blows her off it. <laughs> And then she gets attacked by an alien and, and dies. Well, they get captured by Indians, and they throw her into the fire, at which point she magically gets resurrected. And she's like, I wanted to tell you this. I'm not human. I'm actually from outer space. Yeah. And I've come here to help you stop the aliens. And my only thought was like, really? Why didn't you bring any, like, laser weapons yeah. or missiles or ships or anything else to help you? She's just like she's yeah. just like. Don't worry, we can do it. Yeah, she didn't bring any even any power bands or anything. Daniel Craig had to steal his from fuckhead Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've got one. I'm calling him fuckhead Jimmy because he's a fuckhead and he died a fuckhead's <laughs> death by getting melted by the giant golden power ring that they're making in their spaceship. Yeah, they were making sonic power rings the whole time out of gold for some reason. That's their reason for coming here, too, is they wanted gold. The aliens wanted the gold. Yeah. Why no, do the aliens I, want the they, gold? I want to know why they, the aliens want the gold. I'm certain I want to know why the aliens want the gold. I know in a movie called Cowboys and Aliens, I probably shouldn't question why the aliens want the gold, <laughs> but why do the aliens want the gold? They explained it during the scene where they found out that Olivia Wilde's character was an alien. I don't think so. Yeah, they did. She's like, they came for gold because, and I couldn't remember because I was making so many funny jokes about every scene in the movie. I kind of lost track. I, it, no, they, they I, did explain it. I just didn't remember. I don't, I don't think so, but whatever. Well, it doesn't matter. You got aliens, you got cowboys. Who cares? But then she's like, yeah, I'm just... It just blows my mind that she didn't bring anything to help him, and she's just like, yeah, we can do it. The other thing that pissed me off was, like, they find the alien spacecraft, and then she's like, you have to lure them out, but they, but we have one <laughs> advantage. They think you're stupid. They're not going to have weapons on them. To which what? I thought, why not? It's wouldn't not it their easier planet. Just to go, wouldn't it be easier just to go, zap, dead, rather than have to pounce them off their horses and beat them to death? It's it's a hostile alien planet to them. Wouldn't you go out fully armed at all times? I, just, I would. Yeah, I just... I, I mean, it can't be an entire species of fuckheads. I assumed it was just limited to that one. <laughs> <laughs> but they... Yeah, so... So, basically, they team up with some Indians and some other cowboys, and they lead an attack. Oh, yeah. But the thing that... <laughs> really confused me was they've got all these guns yet the guns don't seem to do jack yeah, shit I think the alien skin is, deflects bullets and Harrison Ford even at one point before they started their attack was all we can't just go in all hollering and throwing spears at them yeah he's basically uh, no I think they can because they did and it worked I know at one shockingly point, they just, well they, the Indians just ride in with spears and start like night lancing yeah. them 
There was one guy who took him out with one of those Apache clubs to the face. Oh, I know. And that worked. Yeah, they're just clubbing him to death. Meanwhile, the cowboys with the guns are going, it's not any, it's not doing anything. Ah. And the Indians are beating the hell out of them. Mm. It, the arrows are literally going pink. Yeah. And the and the guy falls and the alien falls over and it's just like, wow. This was stupid when we <laughs> saw it in Avatar. <laughs> uh. Yeah, when it breaks the the window to the camp command ship yeah. or whatever. Like you guys. Well be at least that well at least those arrows were like six feet long. And these are just have, arrows. They gravity to them, I guess. Whatever. It it it's now to be to be fair. It's silly, but then again, you're watching a movie about cowboys and aliens. Yeah. It, it, you're there to have fun, and it was fun. And oh, no, I, I did like this movie. But there's yeah. just a lot of, like, why moments it, that happen. Right at the end when Harrison Ford and Craig are talking, and uh, Harrison Ford clasps him on the shoulder. He's like, she's in a better place, boy. <laughs> I'm like... She blew up in a rocket. <laughs> I guess statistically a piece of her could have landed in a better place, but I think it's unlikely. Yeah. I mean, they don't really explain much, but it's all right. That's fine. You That's all it. fine. The other thing that really annoyed me was the aliens have like this thing in their chest that opens up and it has two little fleshy arms that come out. I mean, they have arms and legs and, and everything. Yeah. But they have these two extra little ones that, like, come out. And apparently their heart or vital organ is, like, right between that. So there's one point when this little uh, Indian kid or Chinese kid or whatever, he, he, he's yeah. hiding in a rock cropping and the alien's, like, trying to get at him. So the alien just puts his chest against the door or the opening and opens his chest and, like, starts to come out. The kid grabs a knife and literally just shivs the thing, killing it. To it, which I question, why exactly do they have those? Why would they evolve that way? Charles Darwin is spinning in his grave. Like, I, I understand having little arms, but why would it expose vital organs to your prey? It just seems like a very easy, like, kind of reminded me of the buttons that the putties had, the Zed made yeah, and Power Rangers. Yeah, a big you just, fuck you light yeah, right you, in the center. Right, you basically just hit it and they explode. That's kind of like what I thought. You just stab it and the thing goes down. Yeah. Uh, eh. And on the subject of the arms, uh, and this is a problem I had in Super 8 too, these aliens don't look like they're built to operate the fine technical procedures it would take to fly a spaceship. I mean, on the outside, they've got these horrible three-pronged crab claws that look just as maneuverable and only good for killing cowboys. And on the inside, they've got these little arms with these little flaccid dildo fingers on there that also don't look like they could do any fine-tuning on a spaceship. And <laughs> it was more believable in a movie like District 9 than it would be in this one, because they yeah. were at least semi-humanoid looking. Yeah, they had fingers. Right, they had in fingers. In District 9. The, I don't know. But, but again, not really a fault. Just more like an observation. Yeah. So overall, no, I really, I really yeah. liked this movie. Yeah, and at the end, when they get all the gold, and it's like, the town's expanding now at quite a clip. And that sets up the sequel. Cowboys vs. Illegal Aliens. I'd watch that. I would too. I totally watch that. No, but um, yeah, the whole movie, uh, we we were just making like James Bond and Indiana Jones <laughs> jokes. Like, like there's one part where where Harrison Ford rides up and like spears an alien and then grabs his six shooter and blows his head off. And I was like, oh, he shot first finally. God damn. <laughs> I just wanted him one time to just look at the camera and go, I got a bad feeling about this. That would be nice. That would have been awesome. That's in a deleted scene. I know, it should totally be. And then, like, every single time Daniel Craig was doing anything heroic, like climbing on the spaceship or something, I was just going, dun 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 It was, and the part, especially when he's, like, getting all dressed up and in in the cowboy uniform from the in the very beginning of the movie and then he's just kind of standing there like watching this little thing happen in town yeah. and I was just like Bond this is M you are not to intervene <laughs> I don't know it just but they did fan they, the whole movie is just a blast it's just oh, a lot yeah, of fun oh yeah this is good fun this is something I'm very happy with 
And apparently it's based on a comic book, which I yeah. have never read, but neither have I. I'm looking forward That's to That's not necessary. Finding. Yeah, you don't need to see, you don't need to know. It's not like Green But Land it does or help. Or it does help. John, I love the way John What's his name? John Favreau? John Favreau, yeah. Yeah. He does movies very well in terms of pacing. I like the way he sets them up. Mm-hmm. You look at like Sucker Punch or you look at He like, made Sucker No, that wasn't John Favreau. That was, what was his name? Why can't I think of his name? I know his name. I think it was John Favreau. It wasn't John Favreau. It was the guy who made Watchmen and 300. Oh, right. It was, um. Why can't I think of his name? I like most of his movies, damn it. Zack Snyder. That's it, yeah. Never mind. Okay, um, like Iron Man. Yeah, he, yeah. The way, the way those are paced comes across in this movie as well, where... I mean, literally, the movie opens up with him in the middle of nowhere yeah. without any, with amnesia. So and it's a lot like Iron Man. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Another desert scene where some guy is blown halfway to hell and doesn't know where he is. And he's rich. Yeah. Although all his money just got melted, but... Um, yeah, that was actually kind of cool. Like, all the gold on the table yeah. just kind of melted and sucked up into the sky. Like, Why did the gold melt before their house got damaged? Maybe it's some kind of like special heat laser. Maybe, Maybe I don't know. They're aliens. The whatever. Gold. Um, oh, another thing I thought that could be the sequel to this movie: Pirates versus Aliens. To get yeah. their gold doubloons. I don't want Pirates versus Ninjas, but that... no, Pirates and Aliens. Yeah, that's true. But no, there's there's also one scene when when they're all sitting around. They just got kidnapped by the Indians, and the Indians are like, obviously the. the Olivia Wilde's character busts out of the fire and she's and they're all like, oh, she's a deity. Yeah. So they're all sitting around kind of chatting and Olivia looks over at Daniel Craig and says, he knows where the aliens are. We'll just uh, go with him. And no, he's like, I, I don't, don't remember anything. And the no, Indian guy goes, I can fix that. Yeah. And so they make him drink this stuff, which God <laughs> knows what it was. They give him the sacred elk semen. That, re- <laughs> that reveals all secrets you didn't want to remember. <laughs> And this little hummingbird like flies up, and that's how that's how you kind of get triggered that he's having an illusion, or or that he's starting to remember. So you go throughout the entire flashback and kind of learn how he gets out. And then at the very end of the movie, when he wanders into his house again, that now has a gaping hole in the roof, <laughs> um, he's just kind of looking in, and he's just like, "Oh, well, that I guess that's something." And as he walks out, the bird like flies over to him again, and I just was like. So this was all a dream? Is he still having the Indian hallucination or Yeah. Or what? Not that it matters, but you know, whatever. And of course the movie ends with Daniel Craig riding off into the sunset, yeah. like any classic western should do. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I like Harrison Ford in this. I mean, I love him when he's the crotchety yeah. old type of character. Um he it reminded me a lot of the character he played in Morning Glory. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, he plays basically like a really old news oh, okay. anchor. Y- you'd like it. I-, I liked it. Okay. It's formulaic, but it's funny. Um, and Daniel Craig is awesome as as his character. Yes. John, I can't remember what the guy's character's last name, but John... Larrigan? Like, yeah, Larrigan or something. Something like that. But, yeah, it, I, I'd see it. Yeah. Thumbs up. Four stars. Yes, out of I four, agree. Whatever. It's 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 fun at the movies. If you don't, yeah, I walked in with virtually no expectations, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, I walked in wanting to see Daniel Craig and Harrison Ford fight aliens. That was it, and I got exactly what I wanted. And it wasn't haphazard, and it wasn't it wasn't cheesy. What is haphazard and cheesy is that. Yeah, there is something else we want to bring up that just that oh just god blew our minds. Obviously, before you go see a movie, there's obviously previews trailers. for upcoming films, yes. And they had trailers for some interesting films, yes. like Dreamhouse, with Daniel Craig in it, and... Uh, the very last trailer, before this movie starts, is a movie that opens up with this couple on a beach, and they're sweet-talking each other, and they're gonna get married, but her father is Liam Neeson, and he's in the Navy, a big com- naval commander, and the guy is in the Navy, but he's like a fuckhead or something. Mm-hmm. And they go off to sea on one of their expeditions or tours of duty or whatever, and Alexander Skarsgård, Eric from True Blood, is on the ship. And they come across this thing sitting in the ocean, 
and everyone's intrigued, so they send the fuckhead off to investigate with like three other guys in a rowboat. Or, no, it's like a life raft. But they investigate it, and then every this horrible earthquake happens, and this thing comes out of the water, and it's a giant alien ship, and everyone's like, oh shit! And Liam Neeson's like, fire all the weapons. Which ones? All of them. <laughs> He's got his whole Taken vibe going on in this movie. And then the alien ship goes down to the water, and there's two more. And they're gearing up to each other. And then it flies up to an eagle's eye view of them all, like, arranged in a line three to three, like a battle in Final Fantasy. And then, flash to the title. Wait, wait, wait. Now, before you reveal what the title is... I just want you to absorb that for a minute. Yes, let that there all sink are, in. There are three American ships basically fighting aliens. Now, yes, three. what would you name this movie? Like, you would name it something like, I don't know, Invaders or something. Yeah. I don't know. Something, something. spacey. No. no, no, no. It's based on what exactly? The movie is Battleship. It is the based on the Milton Bradley board game. Battleship. And I was in the theater just, are you fucking kidding me? The thing it's is, got this giant setup that looks like it's going to be this amazing movie, and then Battleship. The thing about it is, like, just this morning I was on IMDb, and I saw the poster for it, and I was just thinking, how could you make a movie on, about Battleship? And then I thought about it, you really could do that. Two, two naval commanders <laughs> trying to one-up each other with five ships apiece. I think that could be an interesting action film. Maybe like, you know, Hunt for Red October or something like that. I was completely unprepared for that. That was like getting punched yeah, in the no. dick. But that's all I knew. It was like I saw a picture and a, and, a, and a poster for it. A picture of the guy on the boat. So when I'm watching this trailer and I see the, what re, what reminds me of that picture, I was like, this isn't Battleship. I turned to my friend and I'm like, this isn't Battleship, is it? No, no. Battleship wouldn't have aliens in it. What the hell? And sure it's enough, just, it's Battleship. It's just it's so like, goddamn random. It's like making a Monopoly movie and then having Godzilla destroy Park Place while one guy's bitching about how he doesn't own all four of the railroads yet. <laughs> like, I just... Like, how do you do that? It's I, like, would, I would watch a Monopoly movie with John Galt in it. <laughs> John Galt and Godzilla. Yeah. It's but like, like no. How it's, do you make a how do you make a movie about a board game and fuck it up that much? It's a board game about two naval commanders fighting each other. How is that a problem? They weren't how do you, why do you need aliens? They weren't even that good of formations in the trailer, and it wasn't fog of war, you could see them. It's this like is nothing like against, Battleship. It's like when you're playing against a kid who just bunches them all together because yes. he thinks he's clever. <laughs> it, the closest I can come to describe what this is like, it's like a movie where you have to find different fragments of an alien artifact that have sequences of binary code on them to stop an annihilation device from destroying the planet and calling it Yahtzee. <laughs> it's like a movie where a human and an alien of a different species are chained together and they have to escape some kind of civil uprising and along the way they are telling each other about their homes and their cultures and their lives and calling it trivial pursuit it's it's honestly like you wonder how they can even make a movie about a board game it's only worked once with the movie clue which in my opinion is a very funny movie that really plays on the whole Mr. Body got killed in his mansion idea. Cause, but at least that had a plot to it. Like, the board game had a plot. Yeah. Some guy died, go figure out who it was, and where, and how. Whereas, so that could definitely be a movie. Whereas this, it's two, two players shooting each other with boats. Like, yeah. how, when do aliens come in? Like, I don't ever remember a part where, the, where somebody I was playing against went, oh no, you sunk my UFO. Uh-oh. I... I, oh, uh, no wonder it was in a circular this, pattern this on This movie's board. probably going to be terrible, but I almost might pay just to go in, just to hear Liam Neeson at one point say, You sunk my battleship. I know, that's what I said. I said, I'm just waiting for the part in the trailer where he just goes, They sunk my battleship. I like, I would literally pay, go in, watch it up to that point, go out, get my money back. Mm -hmm. And just be like, No, I saw the best part. No, that was it. I'm done. Yeah. Thanks. Anyway. All right, yes. 
uh, see if you have any interest in Cowboys and Aliens, see it. It's yeah, a, it's loads of fun. Even if you don't, and I didn't, go see it. It's re it's a really good movie. Yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time, especially if you're a fan of of Daniel Craig or Harrison Ford because they're both fantastic in it. Olivia Wilde's okay. Yeah, I I just found her character kind of pointless because all she did was run around and go. I I need to talk to you. I seriously need to talk to you. But other than that, everybody did a great job. It's a entertaining movie. It has its issues, but yeah. I mean, I I really rated on how much fun I had, and this was one of the better movies I've seen all year. So, and a, and a very pleasant surprise. It is what it claims to be. Yes, uh, it unlike, is cowboys and aliens. Yeah, it's much unlike, better than Aliens vs. Predator, or Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. Yes, or any of those kind of Aliens vs. Anything. Thinking of that movie makes me sad. Yes, but Cowboys and Aliens has cowboys fighting aliens. If that interests you at all. See this movie. It's fantastic. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Marauder. And I'm Sandalfon. And we'll catch you guys later.